So this week we are actually going to be talking about <clears throat> a few verses from the Quran. One of the most beautiful things to note is that whenever you are discussing the Quran, we get the luxury of knowing or believing that the Quran, everything it is a hundred percent true, certain, clear. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's Allah talking to us. And so no other book, you have this comfort level where hundred percent of it is true. So there's a different feeling when you read the Quran and that everything in it that you read, you can accept it as being truth. Um, these ayats that we are discussing this week covers a very important theme and topic, and that is teaching us about the adab and the rules and the things surrounding when we spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Quran is divided into 114 chapters, and the chapters are also sub-categorized into Makki and Madani. The, the Prophet spent 23 years in which the ayats came down. The first 13 of those years, the verses that came down during that time is called the Makki Surahs. And the ones that came down in the last 10 years are called Madani. Surah Baqarah and some of the surahs, they get their name, not because of the theme of the surah necessarily, but because of some word that may occur in the surah. Like Surah Tar Baqarah has the word cow, but the theme of Surah Baqarah is not about the story of cow. It has many other themes. So the surahs usually have multiple themes and lessons. And it's just a convenient word to describe um, the surah. But to know that that's when you hear Baqarah, it doesn't mean it's talking about the theme of cow. It's um, multiple subjects that get covered in each of the surahs. <clears throat> now, Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the second chapter of the Quran, is the longest chapter of the Quran. It has 286 verses. And so it is the longest um, chapter of the Quran. And it was a Madani surah. It was the majority of the surah was revealed in Medina. But Allah in his wisdom also caused some of the verses that was revealed in Mecca to be included in that surah as well. Um, like the surah 284, 286 was revealed in Mecca, but Allah added it into the surah. Uh, and this surah, even though it was revealed in Medina, you know, when the surahs became revealed, the Prophet Sallallahu Allah directed the Prophet, which is the order to put it. So even though it was revealed in the, after 13 years and the 10 years in Mecca, uh, in the first two years, which is around the 15th year of the Prophet's mission, the Surah was put as the second surah in the Quran after Surah Al Fatiha. And one of the wisdoms behind this is that in Surah Fatiha, uh, we are asked to ask Allah to guide us onto the straight path in Surah Al Fatiha. And so Surah Baqarah is the answer to that guidance in which Allah starts off Surah Al Baqarah by saying, Alif Lamim, Zalik al Kitabul Araibafi, Hudal al Muttaqeen, that this is the book and they have no doubt. And it's guidance for those who have taqwa. So it is a direct answer to the appeal and the, the, ex, the request to Allah to guide us onto the straight path. But Allah answers it in Surah Al-Baqarah. The ayats we are selecting tonight is uh, from verse 261. And so this, these begins a discussion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know about. Uh, and so, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Mazalun Lazina Yunfikun Amwalahum Fi Sabili Allahi Kamasali Habbatin Ambatat Sabah Sana Bila Fi Kulli Sum Bulatin Miyatu Habba Wallahu Yudha'ifu Limay Yasha Wallahu Wasi'un Alim So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala starts out with a parable, a parable of those who spend their wealth in Allah's way 
is that of a grain that produces seven clusters. And in each cluster is a hundred grains. Allah multiplies for whom he wills. Allah is bountiful, knowledgeable. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying a parable of when you spend your wealth in the, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path of Allah, the word fi sabilillah uh, means in the path of Allah. Sometimes people translate it as for the pleasure of Allah, but it's not really a correct translation. Fi sabilillah means in the way or in the path of Allah. And this, some of the scholars said this indicates those things which we spend to promote Islam for dawa for education so they give it um, an emphasis on that and they sometimes distinguish it from regular charity sadaqa which is more generic and um, broad based so there are other words that allah use lillah like you spend for allah or lihubbillah for the love of allah but here allah says in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives the analogy of a um, grain, usually the old tafsirs would say this refers to corn but uh, in the time of the Prophet وسلم, corn was not planted in the Arabian Peninsula at that time um, and so the scholars are sometimes not too keen to say it is corn but it refers to a plant that have a grain that yields a hundred grain and basically the main emphasis is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you spend, he will cause it to be rewarded 700 times or more. And this 700 times is a, is a favorite number that is used in other places as well. Uh, for example, Abu Masood mentioned that the O Messenger of Allah, you know, he, he bought a camel and a brittle and and he said, oh, this is for the sake of Allah. And the messenger of Allah said, you will earn 700 camels as a reward for it on the day of resurrection. And so here again, we see an example of um, the 700 being used. There's another time in, in which um, the it's several hadith that has the same theme of 700 um, being give, rewarded for you because of what you do. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he is bountiful and knowledgeable. That Allah is wasi'ah. Wasi means expansive. I mean, you know, um, have the capacity to give to whoever and reward whoever he wills. That he's not going to be short uh, in terms of delivering any kind of reward. And not Allah is knowledgeable. He knows uh, our intention and he knows our actions. And so Allah is aware of the things we do. Um, and so Allah begins this discussion with this um, indication to us, this comforting thing that if you're able to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then or in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will reward you 700 times or more. Allah said, Wallahu yudda'ifu yasha. He also adds this to it. And Allah has the ability to magnify and increase that even more as he desires, as he wills. And so from this first verse, we learn of the importance of spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the next thing that we Allah continues with is the um, verse 262 in which he continues mentioning الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ مَوَالَهُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ سُمَّ لَا يُتْبِعُونَ مَا أَنْفَقُوا those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah 
and then do not follow up what they spent with reminders of their generosity or with insults will have their reward with their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. So the first ayah encourages us to spend and shows us the motivation that we need to, to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now Allah is talking about a different matter that the ones who when you actually go to spend, Allah is warning us of two dangers here. And he says, when you spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not follow it up with, as he puts here, reminders of your generosity or insulting the person you have given your help to. The word manna, which really means to impose your opinion into the matter, to push yourself and remind people. Usually when people give money or they donate to an entity or an enterprise or an individual, they sometimes like to have a say. They want to dictate and they want to participate in the decisions of where that money will go and so on. But if you're spending for the sake of Allah, you have to do it without any expectations of a quid pro quo or any kind of feedback or, or, or kickback or favors that you expect when you spend. When you spend for the sake of Allah, you're doing it completely without any expectation of any reward. Some of the scholars even go to the extent that even to the extent of don't ask the person to make dua for you. You know, sometimes we, we give some help to someone and then they say, thank you. And you turn to them and you say, make dua for us. They said, even that don't do. Don't make any condition to your giving. And so manna really refers to uh, push, push, pushing your opinion and trying to dictate the terms of things. And other means to like cause pain to people, to say hurtful things, you know, that um, reminding people, you know, I look, I, when you were down, I helped you and all of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that when you spend, be very careful. Don't ever, ever remind or talk about it to the person or the, the place you have helped. Let it be, be between you and Allah and them. Don't go tell anyone else I've given over here and all of that. And if you do that, Allah says you will have your reward with him and you won't have to fail or grief. You see, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting an adam, an etiquette to how we should, when we spend our money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the other ayah, Allah continues. Qawlum ma'arufu wa maghfiratun khayrum min sadaqati yatba'uha aza wallahu ghaniyun halim Kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury. And Allah is free of need for bearing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further emphasizes the point and says, look, it is a horrible thing. If you give charity and you follow it up by reminders and, and harsh words and so on, it wouldn't count. You know, the, it's, 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 the, the, what is better is to give kaulum ma'ruf, nice, uh, kind words to people and forgiveness. You know, so this is really very important. You know, when you when you give charity, do not have um, insult the people because it also smacks that you are not so sincere. So kind words and forgiveness is what Allah prefers. And um, it emphasizes again that uh, the relationships are what is important. You see, your giving doesn't make you special. It is how you treat the person, the other in which you do it. And what we always want to do, if there's someone in need and they are, and you are going to help them, you have to do it in a way 
that protects their dignity. You see, because the believers, usually when they are in trouble, when they're in hardship, they don't go around telling people. There's a sense of, of uh, grace or, 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 you know, that um, honor that they have, that they only complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So often, sometimes we don't get to know who are the people who are in need because they don't come and say it. We're taught to just depend on Allah and ask Allah alone. So those who have the ability to help, you have got to go and seek out those people. Find them. You know, Hassan al-Basri once, he said that a beggar came to his door, begging, asking for some help. And he began to cry. And the beggar says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to upset you. He said, no, I'm crying because I had you come and had the indignity that you had to come and ask me. I should have been the one that have found you where you were and come and help you. I shouldn't have given you the trouble and the hardship of having to come and knock on my door for that help. So when we give, we protect the dignity. When we give zakah to people, we don't go and publicize it, right? Because this is not one of the other of what we do. So we have to protect the dignity of the people who are receiving. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us about this important etiquette in these ayats. And Allah closes the verse by saying he's Ghani. Ghani means the one who possesses all the wealth, the richest person in other words, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Ghani. And so, and he's Halim. Halim means a person who is nice. Who's, who's clement, who's tolerant, who treats people well. You know, so when you are a halib, you know, um, <clears throat> it's someone who is very nice and very kind and very gentle. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-halib, means he's very generous and kind and nice. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now um, teaches us that reality of how um, we must be very careful because our charity wouldn't count if we don't understand the concept of kind words and forgiveness. It's better in the sight of Allah. Now Allah goes on with the discussion. Yeah, <laughs> فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ صَفْوَانٍ عَلَيْهِ تُرَابٌ فَأَصَابَهُ وَابِنٌ فَتَرَكَهُ صَوْدًا لَا يَقْدِرُونَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْكَافِرِينَ O oh, you who believe, do not nullify your charitable deeds with reminders and hurtful words. Like him who spends his wealth to be seen by the people and does not believe in Allah in the last day. His likeness is that of a smooth rock covered with soil. A downpour strikes it and leaves it bare. They gain nothing from their efforts. Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us why he's emphasizing to us the importance of not following up our charity with hurtful words or reminders of our generosity. He says, because it will nullify the very charity in which you give. In other words, you will lose all the rewards of that charity if you do that that it is really important that when you give for the sake of Allah, that you understand that if you begin to remind people, you could nullify all the good that you've done. And he indicated here, there are nas, and you, you do it sometimes to be seen by people. You know, quite often, you know, a lot sometimes you want to give, we want people to notice. We want people, you know, we have this way of thinking that it, Everything that we do, 
we are looking for approval. We are looking for people to, to confirm and to admire us about it. You know, um, that's where the whole social media and everything comes up. Everything we do, we want the world to see and to admire us and to talk about us, to be seen by men and to be lauded by them seem to be very important. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indicating to us that such behavior is similar to a hypocrite. You know, in that you're not doing it with the right intention. You're doing it just to be noticed so that people can pat you on the back and say, what a generous man you are. What a generous person you are. You know, when we give for the sake of Allah, we don't do that. All right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again emphasizing this. And he gives another parable to make the point clear. And he said, it is like a rock, you know, and the word Safwan, which is used to mean this, this wrong rock and uh, with dirt on it. But the dirt is only surface dirt. But when you pass that rock, you will think that it is rich in soil and it is really, really wonderful and that you could plant stuff on it. And Allah says, below that rock, it's, it's just a tin top soil that fools you. And so for Allah, the parable refers to this rain that comes, you know, and um, falls on the rock. And then what happens, that thing which you think was so solid, so foundational, the rain just comes and washes it away and leaves the rock bare, unable to, to bear anything or do anything. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is giving us this analogy. And the rain is a charity that you gave, that you, you know, you said, oh my gosh, I'm bringing this rain to the rock to, to flourish and to plant good things. But the reality is the intention, which is the rock beneath, is not firm. And so the rain washes it away and you're left with nothing. And so Allah mentions that, he closes the ayah by mentioning Wallahu la yahdil al kafirin. And Allah does not guide any people who are kafir. And here kafir means an ungrateful person, you know, who, who does things for show and not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah says he, his guidance doesn't go to such people. And these are people who they have every opportunity to do an amazing thing, to gain 700 times blessings. But they blew it because they didn't make the right intention. They didn't follow the right adab in order to do that. And so the consequences become very grave. Allah nullifies their very act. And Allah continues again. <clears throat> وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُ بُتِقَاءَ مَرْغَاتِ اللَّهِ وَتَسْبِيتًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ جَنَّةٍ كَمَثَلِ جَنَّةٍ كَمَثَلِ جَنَّةٍ بِرَبْوَةٍ أَصَابَهَا وَابِنُهُ فَأَأْكُلَهَا دِعْفِينَ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the parable of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's approval. Now he's talking about the people who are actually doing it right. Gives another parable. Of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's approval and to strengthen their souls is that of a garden on a hillside. If rain, heavy rain falls on it, it, its produce is doubled. And if no heavy rains fall, then the dew is enough. Allah is, Allah is seeing everything you do. And so now Allah gives the other side of the picture, that the charity of the sincere person what is like if you have a garden on a height, on a, on a, on a high place, or a high place. And so that garden gets, the rain comes down heavy on it. It gets access to water. 
when heavy rain falls, its produce gets doubled. And even if no rainfall, you have dew, which comes and also light shower also produces something from the garden. And so when you give charity with the proper intention, with the devotion, um, this is what it, you end up getting a great deal of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us know that he sees everything that you do. So this is another dimension of the spending when Allah is giving the other side of the picture of the persons who, when they spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will get this reward. This is a garden which will always bear and have these wonderful um, <clears throat> produce. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues the discussion. would any one of you like to have a garden of palms and vines under which rivers flow with all kinds of fruit in it for him? An old age has sickened him and he has weak children. And then a tornado with fire batters it and it burns down. Thus Allah makes clear the signs for you that you may reflect. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives another parable of someone who have spent their whole life and they produce this beautiful orchard, this beautiful garden on which rivers flow with palms and Fines and everything. And then they reach their old age. And then a huge tornado comes and destroy their life's work. And they don't have the strength anymore. They have become so old that they cannot go back and start afresh. And their children, their offspring is too weak to help them. Allah says, you know, would you like that to be your condition? Where is everything that you work for in your whole life gets destroyed in a split second and you're unable to reproduce it. What a loss for such a person. And Allah is trying to let us understand that when you spend a lifetime of spending for the sake of Allah and you don't do it right, all that you're thinking that you have you'll be left un unable to understand that. You know, this ayah also refers to people who spend this whole world just trying to, to gather things for the dunya and then forget about the akhirah and then end up finding themselves in the akhirah with nothing that they have sent away for that moment. They have sent forward for that time. You know, so when this ayah came down, Umar uh, al-Khattab, he, he indicated to Ibn Abbas, who was considered one of the greatest minds at the time of the Prophet so He was a great scholar, a companion of the Prophet, but was very learned. And Umar asked him, you know, um, what is your opinion, you know, about this issue? And they said, Allah knows best. And Allah became, Omar became angry and he said, yes, we know and we don't know, but what, what is your opinion? And Ibn Abbas said, oh, leader of the faithful, I have an opinion about it. And Omar said, oh, my nephew, say your opinion. Do not belittle yourself. And Ibn Abbas says, 
this is an example set for a deed. Omar said, what type of deed? Ibn Abbas said, for a wealthy man who works in Allah's pleasure, and then Allah sends shaitan to him, and he works in disobedience until he annuls his good works. And then Al-Hakim mentioned also that the Prophet ﷺ used to make this dua, O Allah, make your biggest provision for me when I'm old in age and at the time my life ends. So one of the, the very dangerous things that we have is to reach old age and then to don't have any provisions left. You know, we spend our life striving, struggling, gathering, and unfortunately, in our country, this is exactly what happens. We spend all our life gathering and waiting for that day when we'll retire. And when retirement do come, we said we're going to travel the world and we're going to live like a king with our savings. And quite often, 90% of those savings get spent on medical bills, because the system we have, you know, um, we are unfortunately have to pay such huge uh, money for medical bills that all of that money ends up being lost. And you have a very serious situation where um, you're left without any means to survive. We also know that there are lots of older folks are now living longer and the money that they save is running out. And so it's a very bad situation to be in because when you are that age, you're helpless. You can't really fend for yourself anymore. All your life you've been doing that with the idea that you will be, have a comfortable ending. That's why the prophet says, oh Allah, when my old age make it where I don't have to do that. I, I have enough provision provided to provide for me. Quite often, sometimes we have to now turn to the children to be able to help us. And not all of us are blessed with good children. And so they quite often neglect their parents when they get old, they see them as a bothersome inconvenience. And so you're left in this terrible situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this parable to let us know that, you know, whilst you are strong and you are gathering, make sure first you give for the sake of Allah and you give right. Because then that will come back. The person who gives for the sake of Allah, Allah will return it to them at the time they need it most. Allah says, Anfik yabni Adam, unfik alayk. You spend, O son of Adam, and I, Allah, will spend on you. When you spend it during your lifetime for the sake of Allah, Allah will spend on you at the time you need it. So you will be in good shape. And Allah will protect that reward that you have coming, the shade of the day of resurrection when there are only seven shades. Allah, when you spend, changes his relationship with you. And so there's a great deal of encouragement. And Allah says, don't end up in the situation of this person who built all of this and it got demolished so quickly. And so it is a, a very important lesson for us to understand. Allah now continues. And he said, coming back to reminding us again. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, you who believe, and he addresses us directly, give up the good things you have earned and from what we have produced for you from the earth. And do not pick inferior things to give away when you yourself would not accept them except with eyes closed. And know that Allah is sufficient praiseworthy. Ibn Abbas mentioned that Allah commanded them to spend from the purest, finest, and best types of their money 
and prohibited spending from evil and dishonest money because Allah is pure and good and accepts only that which is pure and good. You know, so what happened is that they, they had a system in which they used to collect when they harvest the dates, they would hang them in ropes, you know, um, they, would, they would string them like, like a string, and then they would put them up between the pillars of the masjid. And then the companions who used to live there or the poor immigrants, they would go and they would pull a date off the rope and then they would uh, eat it. But then some of them begin hanging bad dates mixed between the good ones. And so, this ayah reminded them that you cannot do that. You know, um, that when we give, we have to give from the best of what we have. This is really very important. And I'm sure all of us sometimes are guilty of it. When you have, we, we look around our house and then the things which we don't use, which is broken half, not, not, not very good, we give them to others. We have a bunch of fruits, so we pick the ones that are rotten, not so good. To give away to others you know um Allah is reminding us when you give have you ever gotten a gift from people that says my goodness you had a bad you begin to have a bad opinion here's a person who just give you a gift but instead of having a wonderful opinion of them you end up having a bad opinion of them he says gosh they're so cheap this is what they give you know you begin to have a negative opinion because the person who give it to you was not thoughtful enough to give you something that was worthwhile or worthy. Or, or, so Allah is saying, don't give when you're giving something which you yourself would never take unless you are blindfolded. Unless you didn't see it, that's the only way you would take it. <clears throat> don't do that. When we give, we should give in a way of understanding that when I'm giving this, it is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will return it to me and bless me for it. So I should feel honored to have the ability to be able to give in the first place. Aisha radiallahu anha, when she knew that this money she's giving is for the sake of Allah, she used to put perfume on the money to make it smell sweet. She said, this is because I'm doing this for Allah. So whenever we are giving for the sake of Allah, make sure that you're doing it in a way that is, is becoming of you, of your worth and your status. That's something you would be proud to receive if someone gifted. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is adding to this discussion of giving and says, look, here's another dimension to it. That when you do give, be mindful of what you give. Don't give up the worst of what you have. You know, we sell a car. We don't tell people what's wrong with it. Or we fool the person into thinking, you know, people used to sell their grains. They would put... The Prophet used to walk around the marketplace and the, they would have the good grains at the top and the bad grains at the bottom. And the Prophet would push his hand at the bottom and he would say, you should put the bad grain on top. Let the people see. Don't try to fool them with putting the good grain at the bottom. You know, I've always had an experience. I don't know if it's deliberate, but you would go to Walmart and you would buy like a bag of oranges. I don't know if they deliberately do it, but inevitably in that bag, you will see one or two that is rotten. It like never fails. And you'll wonder, you know, is this coincidence? Or are they taking all the rotten oranges and they're just putting two, two, two in each bag? You know, I always wondered about that. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, reminding us again, we are the Muslims. You know, we set the standard. The fact that you have the capacity to give is an amazing blessing from Allah. And Allah closed the ayah by saying, again, you know, that he is, um, Ghani al Hamid. He's the one who has the capacity to, um, to give as much as possible. And Hamid, worthy of praise. In other words, you know, doing it for the right thing, that this person is honorable and reminding us that we should do that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues another part of the discussion. 
الشيطان يعذكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء والله يعذكم مغفرة مغفرة منه وفضلا والله واسع عليم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us another part of this discussion and he said when you go to give shaitan comes to you and he threatens you with poverty he tries to, to, to scare you threatens you with poverty and orders you to immorality while Allah promises you forgiveness from him and bounty and grace and Allah is wasi again there's that word all encompassing alim knowing so what happens is when you go to give the shaitan comes and tries to convince you says look what are you doing you barely have five dollars in your name and you're going to give away three your baby needs milk your house need repairs you have this and that what are you you can't afford to give any money you in fact need money and the shaitan tries to play with our minds and let us know we always in need of money we always will have a need the ability to be able to take some of your money which you yourself need and to give it for the sake of Allah so that another person in the world can have a better life that you are in a better place than them and even though you need that money for yourself but you can take some of it and make their lives 10 times better it's an act of courage and generosity is considered an act of courage and it requires you to have great faith and trust in Allah that Allah will return it to you will do right by you will make sure you don't become poor you will never become poor as a result of giving charity Allah has promised us that and so when you go to give don't allow the shaitan to play with our minds and tell us that we're going to get poor that is why in the moment you know when they do fundraisers and you're at the dinner and they're begging for the money and the imam and the, the fundraiser guy is quoting hadith upon hadith and then slowly your heart becomes softened and then you become motivated and you want to give something you know don't hesitate because if you say well i'll collect the, the form and then when i go home i will write the check once you reach home shaitan is playing with you you don't have the same motivation you're not going to give the money you know that's why the fundraiser guy knows and that's why they want to make sure you give it then when your iman is high elevated raised that's when they're pressing you give it now because if you leave here you leave the hall you leave the dinner and you travel home shaitan will work on you and you will not give so shaitan promises you fahsha which is like all kinds of immorality you know so it is very important that we don't allow this to happen allah promises maghfira you know so shaitan has an effect on the son of adam and the angel has an effect also as for the effect of shaitan it is by his threatening with evil repercussions and rejecting the truth so the angel it is by his promise of a good end and believing in the truth so the shaitan comes and you know threatens us with with poverty and fahsha and Allah promises forgiveness and spending from his bounty and Allah can accommodate all of us so these few ayats let's summarize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussing in these few ayats um, so first of all Allah rewards spending in his path up to and beyond 700 times number two we are not allowed to give and then remind those recipients of our generosity about what we did for them or anything of such we're not allowed to insult them or to make sarcastic remarks to those whom we give to uh, Allah values forgiveness and kind words over you giving following my insults and those who will give and then you remind others about what you give it can cancel out your charity so you can have your charity canceled 
those who acquire wealth, but did not give. You consumed all of it that you didn't thought to give for the sake of Allah. One of the greatest acts of Iman that we have is to give for the sake of Allah. As-sadaqatu burhan. Prophet says, giving sadaqah is proof of Iman. And so, if you do that, you will have nothing left. You will have sent nothing to the next world. When we give, we are actually not giving anything, if you understand well. First of all, this is Allah who gives you this. And all you're doing is doing an act of transferring the rewards that you will get from this money in this dunya to the hereafter. You're actually just making a short-term movement from a short-term account to a long-term account. That's what you're doing when you give that money. All you're doing is you're actually giving yourself. You're making it because this, this belongs to Allah. And he gives you and you're able to transfer it to a reward in the hereafter. And those who give sincerely, Allah mentioned many wonderful things will happen to your life. He will make your path easy for you. He will remove obstacles from your path. There's so many things happens when a person parts with a dollar for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when you give, give from the things which are among the best that you have. Don't give things which, when you're giving a gift or you're giving, give from the best of what you have so that the person can appreciate and you could feel good that that's what you would like to receive also. And when you give, try to ignore the whispers of shaitan who tries to come to you and whispers. So the whole idea between, behind all of this, Islam is big on your attitude and your adab, your etiquette of how we do things. And so even acts of goodness, they have to be followed by a particular attitude and a particular adab, a particular etiquette of how we do them. And so we ask all of you to always give generously. Never be afraid to part with money or any way you can help. You can also give by a sadaqah. Smile is a sadaqah, is a charity. You know, if you have knowledge, whatever Allah has blessed you with, you could give from it, you know, spend from it so that Allah can make all of these wonderful things happen to you. The Muslims are among the most generous people on the planet. All the charitable, we have more charitable groups and um, even in the United States, the, the amount of charity Muslims give, they don't really see it on the media, but Muslims are very charitable. It is a third pillar of our faith. And so we are a people who give generously to help and make the world a better place. And may Allah help us to follow these little guidelines um, as we give our charity, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.